The second part of this podcast is about space acoustics. We've looked about how to reduce outside noise from the recording environment. But what about the effect that the room has on the recording itself? This is vitally important, because you may spend thousands of pounds on a really great sounding microphone, but the room itself might sound horribly muddy and be a complete waste of time. The aim of a good recording is to do one of two things. You either completely capture the sound, the true sound of the instrument in a completely unchanged way. We call this transparent make it as transparent as possible. Or you record it in such a way that it becomes colored and improved. Generally, the best practice is to record it transparent. That way, you can apply any effects after the fact. So you've got a lot more choice, you have a lot more flexibility. So it is best practice to try to be as transparent as possible with your recording, which means your room itself needs to have as most minimal effect on the music as possible. So how do we do that? There are two areas of space acoustics that we need to consider. It makes it much easier if we think about them separately. These two areas are room modes and reverb. First of all, we're gonna look at room modes. Room modes is the effect that parallel walls have on a particular note. What happens is if you have two parallel walls you get what's called a standing wave that occurs between them. And a note will stand out. So you may be recording um, a scale, for example, and a note will just jump out of the middle. You didn't play it any louder. There hasn't been any automation done on the desk. The room itself has made the note louder. What I'm gonna do now uh, is do a bit of an experiment in a different room because I need some parallel walls. Okay, so this room has two parallel walls. The wall behind me and the wall behind the camera are exactly 4.2 meters apart. The note that we should get standing out will be totally dependent on the distance between these two walls. So what that note's gonna be, according to our equation, is the speed of sound over two times that distance. The speed of sound is 344 meters per second. The distance 4.2, so two times that is 8.4, which gives us 82 hertz. Conveniently enough, that's the note of E which is an octave below middle C. So what we're going to do is we're going to send a a sine wave, a pure tone, through a speaker, which is next to one of the walls, and that will go from um, just below E flat to just above F, and hopefully 82 hertz should stick out. On the right of the screen, you can see a sound monitor level, which is connected directly to a microphone in the middle of the room. On the left of your screen is the max patch, which is going to be sending out our frequency. As you can see, it's 75 now. I'm going to turn the speaker on, hit the max patch, and it will travel from 75 to 90 hertz. And hopefully, we shall see the difference. Okay, so we've seen that our low E note, our 82 hertz, has increased by 13 dB, which of course is shocking and you do not want that in a studio. So how do you avoid that? The most obvious way to avoid that, of course, is to do away with parallel walls, which is all well and good if you're building a studio from scratch, but very few of us actually have that opportunity. If you do have parallel walls, and let's face it, most of us will, there are ways to break it up. You can put in bookshelves, which will break up the surface of the wall, and you can put on various different materials, which will stop a certain amount of the reflections happening. But as we're about to find out, materials have very different properties and are going to affect more than just your standing waves. Which brings us to reverb. Reverb is hundreds of tiny reflections of the original sound. It differs from echo in that an echo is distinguishable as a separate sound from the original. As a general rule, if it happens 50 milliseconds after the original, then it's an echo, 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 echo. If it happens any less than 50 milliseconds, it's reverb. In the recording studio, there's good reverb and bad reverb, however. But in the same way that it's best to have a flat frequency response, 
it is best to reduce the amount of natural reverb as much as possible because it gives you so many more choices afterward. It is impossible to completely remove reverb, so the important thing is that the reverb that you do have is good reverb. Now, sound works very similarly to light. If you can imagine light reflecting off a mirror, that's exactly what happens to a flat wall. Sound will bounce off the flat wall and come right back at you in a very similar way to the original. What we want is diffused reverb. Diffused is the way forward. What happens when sound is diffused is exactly the same thing as would have happened if you have steam on a mirror, for example. Steam on the mirror will cloud the picture, the light goes off in many different directions and you can't see what's happening. For sound, this is a good thing. This makes the reverb much easier to listen to. It's much easier on the ear. This is good reverb. An example of a diffuser is this panel behind me. Uh, you can see that it has quite a few different dimensions, um, quite a few different depths, and the sound going into it will bounce off in all kinds of different directions, giving you this good reverb. Continuing the light analogy, sound can be absorbed, but different materials will absorb different amounts of different frequencies. So for example, light material like curtains and eggshell cartons and light foam will only absorb the high frequencies and will leave the mids and the low frequencies to rattle around the room and give you that horrible woolly sound. Ideally, you'd want one kind of material which would absorb evenly across the spectrum, but sadly this doesn't exist. So generally what you do is split it into three areas. You get the light foams, which generally have sort of spiky bits on them to, uh, to look good and to view the sound. There's an example of these up on our ceiling in the studio. These get rid of the highs. You then generally will go to something with a bit more density to get rid of the mids. So fiberglass is a good example of that. Um, we have various fiberglass panels like this around our studio. These are very effective at getting rid of the mids. To get rid of the low end, you need bass traps. These are boxes, Helmholtz absorbers. These use a gap of air and a certain amount of absorbative material to get rid of various low frequencies. And that's basically it for this podcast. If you're interested in this kind of thing, we go into it in exquisite detail in National Diploma Year 2 of uh, Music Technology.